Uh, hi everyone, my name is Anal Abu Ammar. I'm part of uh, Minan Lazi Group at University of Cambridge. So today we're going to talk about development of an automated pipeline for segmentation and organal contact analysis from volume electron microscopy analysis and data. Okay, so let's start talking about the technique and why is this technique volume electron microscopy is important. It actually was nominated, nominated by Nature as one of the seven technologies to watch in 2023. At the start, for a long time, we used the classic uh, 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 pipelines and uh, classic techniques. And these classics were actually uh, techniques just taking the surface of the tissue and a small amount of the uh, samples. So with the development and everything we have now, we can use the CEF, uh, SPFM and SPFSM and uh, FEPSM on these techniques to actually get the 3D uh, dimensions of these uh, images and samples. So in the Minella lab, we actually study the airway epithelium. Why is this important? Because it plays an important part for our protecting our lungs from bacteria, viruses, and any environment pollutants. So what are the steps we take to collect this sample? We do the nasal brushing biopsy. So we either collect it from the nose or we collect it from a surgical incision. And then we take this sample, we grow it in aliculture, or we do fixation. Then, act, then we take this sample and we do it in resin block. After that, we do the image acquisition using the FEPSIM. And this is because it provides a isoptric a resolution for the image we're gonna take. And then we collect the 2D registration of the images. And then we do the 3D construction and analysis that we're gonna talk now in the next few slides. So what we do actually, we use, we can compare between different approaches, the manual segmentation and deep learning segmentation. The manual segmentation is taking the raw data, then we will do manual segmentation for all the slices, and then we'll get the final output of this segmentation of the organelle. The different algorithm, the deep learning, there is different algorithms, but in this uh, uh, approach, we use Panoptic Deep Lab and we use software in Panada. We'd, we'd like to thank uh, Kedar Nare for the development of this software. So we take the raw data, we, we segment only a few slices, so we don't go actually through the whole volume. And then we will do the training using the architecture, Panoptic Deep Lab uh, architecture. And then after getting this final output, we will have the input of the whole volume. And then we will test it on the trained model and we will get the automation uh, for the whole volume. So in Panada segmentation, how does this workflow actually works? As it's in the paper mentioned, it's uh, firstly trained on unlabeled data set, uh, consists of 1.5 million data. This data is from different variations. So it's from different experiments, from different tissues, from this, uh, different labs. And then we will do unsupervised learning using the Panoptic Deep Lab model. We will get this pre-trained model. Then we will do the transfer uh, learning and we will do it on a specific task uh, which using mitochondria. The software used uh, almost 135,000 uh, labeled mitochondria, did supervised learning, got the final mitonet, and then we get the final output of the model to test it on the unseen data. This approach in our lab, we try to utilize it, and this is how we do the fine tuning on specific organelles from our airway cells that we study. So as mentioned before, uh, in, in today, panoptic segmentation, I'm gonna throw, go uh, very fast. So we have this image here. We have the, just like a city, we have it and there's cars and different things. The semantic segmentation, what it does, it, uh, it just classifies the classes and the instant segmentation, it classifies the objects. And in panoptic segmentation is the combination of both of them. So it's semantic and instance, which will provide more details and input. In this example here, uh, the panoptic segmentation, we can see that there is a uh, mitochondria. So it can classify this is mitochondria, then we can classify this is mitochondria one, two, three, and those will help us to do analysis and get the count of these objects and furthermore. So we can see here, this is an example of uh, a raw data. Uh, this was collected a few, a few years back and this was manually segmented by uh, a grad student in our lab. And this, you can tell you how would take a lot of time to do it. So this is like a huge uh, data that was done. 
And this is the manual 3D reconstruction. So the last volume, we did the 3D reconstruction of this. We can identify different cells, and this will help us further on to do more of like the understand and analyze the content and the contact of the organism in these different cells. So if we think about it, what's the problem with the last approach? The last approach took actually several months to get the last output. Uh, and with this data and this volume, this was all done automatically, although the size of this data is almost and more the double of the previous data, and it just took a few weeks to do the training and get this final output. So now we're going to take also another volume, another example of how we apply the segmentation for a specific organelle using deep learning and an AI technique. So we did a few steps to actually get the segmentation for a specific organelle. First of it, we, did, uh, we selected a few slices. And with a try and error, we figured out that just uh, using four to eight slices were enough to actually fine tune on the pre-trained model. After selecting these specific slices, we're going to do manual segmentation. In this example, we're going to talk about Golgi as an organelle. And this is a close-up for this uh, organelle. This is manual segmentation, as mentioned. And the third step, we're actually going to create patches. So if you think what is patches and what's, why is it important, patches is just a small squares of the image because the volume input is very huge. So we're going to take advantage of taking small to be more focused on a few details, create more data for our input and segmentation. So after creating these patches, we were going to have two different variations. We're going to have the informative and informative. Informative is the patches that contains the segmentations of the organelle of interest. And informative is what does not have the segmentation. And having both of them and having a specific ratio will help us to get a good accuracy and good model of not over-segmenting or under-segmenting the model. So the fourth step is actually training the organelle. Uh, then oh, after getting this parallel training data from creating the patches from our volumes, we're going to have the input. We're going to have it for empanada. And we're going to train our uh, specified organelle from our data set and get the final prediction. So you can see here, this is almost 2,000 slices. This was all done uh, automatically for the segmentation and the prediction, and we trained only on four to eight slices. Okay, so we actually use and we utilize the empanada software to actually do the segmentation for the organism specified. We thought how we can utilize and do uh, and use this for analyzing a specific organism in a specific uh, cell. So this is how we developed a strategy to extract a specific cell, a cell of interest, to do a comparison between cells or to study the organelles in a specific cell. So the first approach uh, we do, oh, sorry. So the first things we do is actually we create uh, using uh, eye mode, we draw edges around the cell of interest we want, and then we do interpolation. So maybe it's not showing uh, a lot, but there is just like edges of this cell. And when, when we draw just a few cells and the software itself will automatically done the interpolation and done it for, use it for the whole cell. And then we automatically also use image J to fill the bounding of this specified uh, cell of interest. And this will create a mask that will help us to extract the cell. Then this is just an example of the final output of an extracted cell with the organelles uh, trained and segmented all automatically. And this is the representation of a 3D. Okay, then we thought what kind of analyz uh, analyz analysis we can do. Uh, the analyzation we did here is organelle to organelle contact. Uh, for distance, and we take uh, the first step, we take two organelles. So in this example, we take uh, lipid droplets and early endosome, and then we combined both of them. And we, what we got is the actually uh, model of the instance segmentation for these models. 
Then the second thing, we actually used a 3D suit to plug in from MSJ, and this is beneficial because we can put the organelles of interest, we can choose uh, this plugin, and then it will generate actually an Excel sheet that contains different information, center to center, border to border, and center to border uh, distances information. Then it's just uh, we created a small Python script. What it does, it sorts the labels we have, and then uh, we will delete the duplicates we have for these labels. And then we will fi filter the inter and intra organal intersection because we, we may want the intersection between the organelles or the organelles within themselves. This is just like a, so a small example of different cells. This is cell type one and this is cell type two. And this is where we studied and ran the script that we mentioned before. And this is the final output we got after running it on uh, these two cells. We can notice that the cell type one, we actually got um, almost 2.68 contact with, of distance. And in cell type two, we have no contact. This is still something we're studying, but this is like the first thing that it can tell information about these cells and the uh, scatter and interaction between the organelles themselves. So I would like to thank my lab, Manila Lab, and uh, KIDAR and all the institutes that actually provided the data for us. Thank you. All right, uh, we are a few minutes ahead of schedule, so if anyone has questions, two mics here. Uh, if you are far from the mics, I could throw the purple cube at you. I'll ask the question if no one else does. Um, that was a really beautiful talk, really excellent work. Um, something that sort of blew my mind is the only doing it on four um, slices. Did you distribute those slices throughout the whole um, 3D block? Because surely um, the middle versus the top of a certain structure looks quite different. Yeah, OK, so we, we have two approaches because we created patches. And these patches, when you create it, you get the different accesses. So it will actually provide data from the x, y, and z. And then you can segment it and it train from different uh, accesses and variations of the cell. All right, uh, if there are no more questions, last chance. All right, so let's thank the team.